can you skip six months of your mortgage payments with forbearance? Hey, this is Andy with the Mandel team at Remax, and I wanna to talk to you today about forbearance and what that means for homeowners. There's a lot of news going around and a lot of misinformation, so I wanna make sure you have all the facts when it comes to forbearance. So first off, let's talk about what forbearance means. In the CARES Act, which was the economic stimulus package that was passed at the end of March by the President and Congress, the bill said that mortgage companies have to give you up to a six-month grace period during all this economic chaos caused by the COVID outbreak to not have to pay your mortgage. That period is called forbearance. And we had a similar situation going on in 2008, 2009, 2010, and a lot of homeowners got really, really screwed with this. So I wanna make sure you know what this means and what to look out for, and most importantly, how to protect yourself from having the same kind of chaos that happened to a lot of homeowners in the last recession. So first off, forbearance is really only for people who absolutely need it, and you'll understand why shortly, but let's talk about how you get this forbearance. So the first thing you have to do is you have to call your mortgage servicer. That's the people who you make your monthly payment to every month. So for me, that's Mr. Cooper. Uh, whoever you're making your monthly payment to every month, that's what's called your mortgage servicer. You have to reach out to them directly. This does not happen automatically, so make sure you reach out to them. And here are some tips when you're reaching out to them. Make sure that you're recording the conversation. Most likely when you speak to someone on the phone about forbearance, they're gonna say, hey, we just gotta let you know that this phone call is being recorded. You should probably say, hey, I just wanna let you know, Mr. Cooper, that the call is being recorded on my end as well. Not that I don't trust the banks, but you never know what's gonna happen. I wanna make sure you're protected. So I would highly suggest you record the call Step number two, or tip number two really, is make sure you get everything in writing. Whatever you agree to, make sure you get it in writing from your mortgage servicer, because again, not to say that I don't trust them, but if they forget what your conversation was or something like that, make sure you're protecting yourself, get it in writing. So the CARES Act that was passed at the end of March, part of that package said that these mortgage servicers had to provide you with forbearance if you are having trouble paying your mortgage. So they are not allowed to mark your credit negatively during this period. They have to mark you as current on your mortgage payments, whether or not you're actually paying. It doesn't specify what's gonna happen after the forbearance period ends. So a lot of people get in a lot of trouble. They get the forbearance, they get the grace period, then all of a sudden afterwards, you know, their credit drops hundreds of points and they're late on their mortgage and it could be a bad situation for everyone. So be careful with that. I would try to make sure you ask your mortgage servicer what's gonna happen with your credit after the forbearance period. Again, make sure you get it in writing. So let's talk about what the forbearance period is actually gonna do for you. So let's assume your mortgage payment is $2,500 a month. The bank is gonna say, okay, Mr. Homeowner, we'll allow you to skip your mortgage payments for six months. Option one that they're gonna say is, on month seven, you now owe us $17,500 in a lump sum payment. That's $2,500 a month, times six months, plus your next month's mortgage payment. So you're behind $15,000, you owe the bank $15,000, and then you need to pay the next month. So you'll have to come up with a $17,500 one payment lump sum in this scenario. Now for a lot of people, that's probably not realistic because if you're calling and you're asking for forbearance, it's most likely because you lost your job or you're not making money, and that's probably not a very realistic situation for most people who actually need forbearance. So option two that they might give you is to take that $15,000 that you owe the bank and break it up into 12 monthly payments. So if you do that math, that breaks down to $1,250 extra every month that you have to pay on your mortgage. So that takes your $2,500 a month mortgage to $3,750 per month. Again, for a lot of people, that might not be attainable. Sure, certain people might be able to tighten their belt financially and you know sacrifice certain other things and make those payments, but for a lot of people, you just can't do that. You can't raise your payment by 1,200, 1,300 bucks a month and, and be okay. Option three is really the option that you want. So what that's gonna allow the bank to do is to basically do a loan modification which says, okay, start making payments on, you know, on month seven, so after the six month forbearance period, and we're going to extend the term of your mortgage for six additional months. So if you had 20 years left on your mortgage, you now have 20 years and six months of payments left. That's most likely the best option for most people because 
You don't have to make up the payments right now. You're putting it towards the end of your loan and most people don't stay in their house for, for the full 30 year term of their mortgage. So that's what you should really shoot for and I encourage you to try to get your bank to do that. But here's the caveat. You have to be careful about this. In your mortgage payment every month, most likely you're paying PITI, Principal Interest Taxes and Insurance. So the bank is gonna move those six months of principal and interest to the back of the loan, but the taxes and insurance, those are still gonna be due this year. You still gotta pay your property taxes. You're still gonna have to maintain your homeowner's insurance to have a mortgage on your property. So you are going to have to come up at the end of the year with most likely six months of your taxes and insurance portion of your mortgage payment. You're gonna have to make that up. So be careful, you are still gonna make some sort of payment most likely at the end of this year. You're gonna have to have some money set aside for that. If you don't have money set aside for that, if you're not able to pay it, what I would recommend that you look into is possibly refinancing the house. So if you need a good lender recommendation, give me a call, shoot me a text. I have great lenders who we work with. Interest rates are really, really low. So if you need to, again, don't refinance if you don't have to, it costs you money, it increases the, the balance on your loan. And if you don't have to do it, you really shouldn't. But if you need to, here's how you can probably get around having this taxes and insurance portion that you have to pay at the end of the year. So when you refinance, they're typically paying a full month of interest up front. So if you refinance at the beginning of May, your first payment wouldn't be till the beginning of June. So you, you get a, basically a free month, quote unquote, of a mortgage payment there. Then they're gonna take the taxes and insurance part of your mortgage that you're behind. They're gonna roll that into your mortgage balance so you're not really going to feel it technically. You're not gonna to have to come out of pocket with a lump sum to pay that. And when you refinance, you're paying off the old loan. So whatever is currently in your escrow account for taxes and insurance, you're gonna get that back about 30 days after you refinance. And you can use that money to do whatever you want, pay off other bills or anything like that. So that's a nice little bonus check and it's potentially a way that you can get around this whole issue by refinancing. Now again, make sure whatever you decide with your mortgage servicer, you get it in writing, have the phone call recorded. This forbearance does not happen automatically. You have to call your mortgage servicer. So be careful with this, that it's there to help people out, but there are some potential negative side effects with going through forbearance. So it really is only for people who absolutely need it. Listen. I understand the world's gone a little crazy right now. I totally get it. I wanna make sure you're as informed as humanly possible throughout this whole process. If you ever have any questions, comments, or concerns, whether you're thinking about buying or selling now, six months from now, six years from now, I don't care. I'm here to be of service to you and to be helpful in any way that I can. So don't be a stranger. If you have a question, reach out to me. Call, text, email, smoke signal carrier pigeon. If you have a real estate question in South Florida, I got your back.